if we could, I would love to just start by talking about the very simple topic of Catholicism. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm a Catholic. I was wondering if you are Catholic or... Yeah, uh, from, from uh, I'm born a Catholic. Okay. Uh, I picked up on a lot of the symbolism in the film and, you know, thought about the film from that angle uh, a lot last night. Okay. Wondering um, some, of the, some of the questions that I think are being answered are... And tell me how far off I am with this and where you're going with it. Um, do, we, do we ask, if, if we believe in this God and this larger power, do we ask how he let something like this happen? Or? No, the thing is that it, I don't, prisoners, in my mind, is, is uh, the way it described the religion is, 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 is uh, for me, what it says about religion is uh, one of the characters is getting his strength from religion, doing things that uh, are not uh, uh, good, I mean, and it's, it's just that I think that uh, the problem very uh, the problem is not religion itself, it's how you use it. Okay. Uh, it's, 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 love, it's like, uh, and it's, that is something that is, uh, has been like this since the beginning of times, and it didn't evolve at all. I mean, all the religions can be taken to do good, or bad things. Right. It's, it's, it's just that religion give you, uh, your belief can be, give you so much power. And it's uh, up to you to know if you will do good things with it or bad things. Okay. You know? yeah. and, and the words right and wrong then, when you use religion as an excuse for, uh, for your motivations, yeah. they become very gray, don't they? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. But I think I don't believe in the, in the, again, I'm a bit con contradictory right now, but I don't <laughs> believe in the, in the black and white okay. uh, world. I don't believe, I think that uh, reality is very complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I think that uh, um, the more I learn about this world, the more I feel that it's uh, um, uh, obscure and uh, complicated and uh, there's no simple answers and uh, everything is linked from our intimacy to, to our relationship with others and society and politics. It's, everything is like a big puzzle and uh, chaotic. Uh, yeah. Mr. Jackman's character leans on his faith. Yes, yes. Often throughout the yes, film. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm curious, as an actor, how many conversations did he have with you in terms of, you know, how solid is this man's faith and how, how much of it is it guiding him? Was that a concern for him? Uh, the, yes, yeah, I think that, uh, and uh, to be honest, uh, the idea that uh, killers has to uh, find his strength, and uh, not just his strength, but, okay, I would say it uh, differently, the relationship with killer's character mm -hmm. and God and his uh, religion is something that I felt was uh, very, very accurate and interesting. And I, I, I dig in that field uh, uh, as a filmmaker. Uh, the more the movie was, uh, we were in the process. It's a, uh, let's say that there's more religion in the movie than in the screenplay. Oh, okay. Sometimes. Okay. It's a thing that I felt that what I, I loved about it is that it was giving us, as an audience, a direct access mm -hmm. to. Uh, Keller Dover inner world, mm -hmm. though his relationship with the world, seeing from inside. Okay. Because what is the most intimate? There's nothing more intimate than your relationship, even if you believe or not in God. Mm -hmm. It's a very. Uh, if you don't believe in God, then you believe in nature. You believe in uh, something else. You have to at one point. Uh, you, you you or you believe in nothing, but it says a lot about your relationship with the world. Right, right. right. And that it was what uh, attracted me so much. Uh, about uh, yeah, this this intimate uh, relationship with his, uh, his beliefs. I'll move on from God after this, but I laughed at the at the phrase, you know, uh, man plans and God laughs, and yeah. we see Keller's basement, and he's prepared for the worst. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's someone he doesn't, doesn't trust. He, he doesn't trust. Uh, he trusts uh, himself. He right. doesn't trust society. Right. Society. It's really someone that has a specific view in, in the world. Yeah. But none of that stuff helps him in the long run yeah, yeah, yeah. when he's I faced with a problem yeah exactly, exactly. essentially I think that the, the one of the moral the, the thing in prisoners that uh, you have to trust 
other people. You have to be, we have to be in relationship together. We have to work together. That's a bit of one of the things that the prisoner is about. Okay, shifting gears. Uh, the symbolism of rain is prevalent uh, in your film, and it's either a very expensive effect, <laughs> mm. or you were ecstatic when it was raining all the time. <laughs> it was both. <laughs> it was both, because the thing is that it was part of the screenplay, and the, the, the story uh, uh, happens right uh, after Thanksgiving, which is a period of time in Canada that I love. Mm. Like uh, October, November, it's a, the, the way the, the trees are, are, are is just the... the the, just before winter, just before, it's just the, you feel the threat of, of, of winter, it's just, and I love the light at that period of time, this darkness and this uh, sadness, melancholia, and uh, it's true that in, in uh, Prisoners, uh, the weather is a character, mm. it is something that we, we put a lot of effort, because it, it needs a lot of work to avoid the sun, of course. you know, it's, it's like a, it was a struggling, it was the opposite, usually when you make a film, you're looking for good weather, you know, on prisoners was the opposite. <laughs> we were running for rain. You know, <laughs> where uh, when it was uh, shitty uh, shit coming from the sky, we were say, "All right, thank you." Right, it's like go. <laughs> <laughs> now, because of that, and especially when you when you're pushing your actors to go to some very dark places, um, how many takes do you look for? How many chances do you give them to to get it before you think you've exhausted them? The, the it's uh, that uh, it depends on the actors. Okay, some of them. They are good with the first take. Uh, I, the, the, I think the, the, the way I work is that I listen to actors a lot and I try to understand uh, quickly uh, how they, uh, specifically each one of them will uh, react in front of the camera. Uh, some actors are just good at the second take. They are actors that are fantastic at the second take. Mm -hmm. Others are uh, the first one, others need a little bit of a, a warm up. The, three or four takes and others uh, likes to go and go mad and chaotic and uh, 35 takes. I mean, it's like, uh, like Jake Gyllenhaal is someone, I developed a, 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 a technique of work with him, which is that we do as much takes as he want. Okay. Because I know that at one point, uh, uh, Jake's will uh, go in zone, in a space and in zone that, uh, uh, and of improvisation that will deeply inspire me and uh, excite me. And uh, I, I was really, uh, it's, a t it's a way of working that I developed on my previous film with him. And it's just, so it's, I, I'm, not, I'm not a dogmatic director about that. It's, it's, it depends. First of all, there's something that Clint Eastwood said one day, saying that after three takes, if it's not good, it's because there's a, either a problem with the screenplay or the director. Okay, right. it's, a, it's not when you make the right casting. Right. So I think that uh, most of the time, I don't do a lot of takes. Okay. Uh, I'm not someone that... Uh, so you guys shot Enemy before? Yeah, before exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, but did you have them in mind for Prisoners? Uh, the thing is that uh, as I was doing Enemy, uh, we had so much fun right. and so, so much bonding together and, uh, that uh, when I began to uh, think about uh, the casting for Prisoners, Jake was the first one to pop up in my mind. What is the blinking, that he, the nervous tick that Loki does? The thing is, the character of Loki in the script was not, it was a character that was more in the script to serve the story, to, to help the dramatic structure. It was not a, all the characters were super well written, well defined, uh, but not the cop. And I felt that uh, I needed uh, an actor that will be able to create a real human being, okay. someone that will. And Jake, it was just part of the Jake's brainstorm. Okay. It was just a way uh, for Jake to create a character to give hints about his past. Okay. So when you have such a blinking, it means it's very often it's like a nervous thing. You know, it's uh, something that uh, coming from. Uh, uh, tension inside yourself that you have uh, difficulty to struggle and what I, I loved about it is that uh, very often uh, the idea was to to work with it in a specific moment when the character was dealing with a specific tension in the scene mm -hmm. you know it's uh, something that you don't control it gives a, a clue to uh, with his vulnerability yeah, we left last night talking about finger tattoos and a mason ring and all yeah. these other little you know hints at his character that, that belongs to Jake Jane. If you have to answer about it, <laughs> right. ask Jake. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting the rest. So thank you very much. I thank really you appreciate you. your time. Appreciate thank it. You, thank thank you. you. Thank you.